Test, 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 test. <clears throat> hello, hello. Welcome to another day. Um, sorry, I'm getting everything set up. <clears throat> this, that, that, is that. Why no? <clears throat> Can Dracula not make it? I'm not a stream without Dracula. Dang. <clears throat> All right. Where were we? Does this still run? Still works. That's good. Jimmy writes this. Dracula going home to watch the stream. Morning, JJ. How's it going? That's some fast car driving right there. Good morning, Jomi. How are you guys doing today? I actually don't remember what I was working on. Uh, doing good? Nice. Love to hear it. Oh, that's right. Hmm. 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 Oh, I wanted to do login, log outs. So that when you, lo when you launch the game, you actually have to like click a button to log in. And so that's what we'll do today. I should really, I feel like I should title my streams with things that are more like, oh, hey, Dracula. I hate you. I timed it perfectly. I was like, Dracula, based off of his time zone, is going to be leaving right now. So, time to start streaming. Yeah, I ran a little bit late today. So, you know. <laughs> uh, drip the flames together with someone for a pioneering project. We'll build, it, we'll build in the youth movement. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Do you do that as a volunteer, or do you get paid for that work? <laughs> Just tired, and I have to mow grandma's yard today. Yeah, mowing the lawn's not fun. Especially since you said, it sounds like you uh, have a lot of land. So, I'm sure that takes a long, long time. So I do not envy you for that. I get paid in cheap beer. Oh, nice. Hey, that's value right there. That is some good value, cheap beer. But it sounds like your guys' beer is already pretty cheap. So, um, let's see here. <clears throat> to be honest, you know, I just hate this lifestyle. I'm sorry, buddy. Yeah, 50 cents is very cheap for a beer. That's actually like, that, compared to here, that's, real, that's a, a really good value. Like, I might, I might start drinking beer if it was only 50 cents. <coughs> I, usually, I usually just drink water and coffee. I actually had one cup of coffee today. I might, I might make another one. Am I sick? No. Do I sound sick? I just have a cough. I've had a cough recently. I think they're the... I have like seasonal allergy allergies and uh, the seasons are kind of like in that shifting mode. So, <clears throat> you know, it builds up. Do I sound, do I sound really nasally? Oh, I take loratadine today, daily. Oh, I do sound nasally. I'm sorry. Sorry, you guys gotta listen to it though. <clears throat> I usually take Zyrtec, but uh, I... um. I kind of neglect to take it. Sometimes I forget. I don't mean to forget, but I do. I don't think I've used my UI package yet here. You're surprised I don't drink tea? Why is that? Let's go to an example. Tea versus coffee. I like. I just like. I like the flavor of coffee more than much more than tea. I don't know. I feel like it's always co coffee's always been like uh, what I like to drink. Actually, like in college, I didn't really drink coffee. It was only until I got my first job and I had to wake up early to like go work for eight hours that I started drinking coffee. Cause I get I get into work I'd just be like oh gosh but you know that's life I guess you sound like a real West Coast Washington person <laughs> why do you say that is that what uh oh because I like coffee yeah I think uh, coffee's pretty big in Seattle Seattle's best coffee Starbucks anybody ever heard of those I think they're both Washington companies yeah I'm pretty sure Starbucks was started in Seattle pretty sure I have no idea what a West Coast Washington person would sound like apparently it's me apparently that's what I sound like. I don't know that like uh i feel like most there's like a few accent there's a few places with accents like new jersey new york and then like the midwest accent and then everyone else i think sounds like kind of the same maybe there's maybe i'm missing a few but there's a boston accent obviously i feel like most people drink more coffee than tea though i don't think tea's all that uh i don't think tea's that popular right maybe i'm wrong let's do um i need to copy some sprites over but i'm gonna copy some button sprites I should have like deep in my UI library. I should have default sprites. Just so I don't have to worry about. Uh, just don't have to worry about this. Let's see here. Nope. Also, what's a pioneering project? Is that like uh, hiking? Is that the same thing, or is it like outdoorsmanship? In Belgium, we got a lot of accents. Oh, oh, really? Like different ones? I feel like I feel like Europe in general doesn't doesn't Europe in general have like I guess maybe I'm thinking more of England, but a pioneer scouting. All right, give me a second. Pioneering. Pioneering is the art of using ropes and wooden spars joined by lashings and knots to create structure. Huh. Do you want to talk like this? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I used, to, I used to do scouting when I was growing up, too. That's cool. I like stuff like that. I think stuff like that's a positive influence on people, on, like, young kids growing up, you know? Ooh, I got the yawns today. Maybe I will have to make a coffee. Jeez. I copied over some button sprites just so I can make buttons for, for the UI. Ours was a... Uh... Ours wasn't really building. It was like building some things. Nothing like that intricate, though. What did we do? It was mostly like camping. Like you learned camping stuff. I'm trying to find a video I took of last year's project, but I can't find it. Nice. Yeah, share it. Let's see. Let's see here. 
Um, actually, I don't know how, how I want to organize this. I'll probably just have to start off. I'll probably just have a button that lets you connect and then a button that lets you disconnect like log in and log out. I'm not going to have any like user auth or anything like that just yet, but, but it's weird because I don't want to start these systems. I don't want to do any of this connection stuff until, un so I almost need like a scene switcher. I don't know. I mean, I really just need a function. Instead of run game, I'll just like run. Hmm. Well, I need a way to like clean up resources too. I guess as long as everything cleans its own stuff up, I can just call this. <clears throat> so I'll, I'll do like a run menu and then run menu will eventually, um, Oh, but I need one window, don't I? That's the kind of hard part, I think. It's a video from, oh. Uh, every time we talk about Belgium, I want to go there. If crime isn't bad there, I'd probably live there. I don't think crime is that bad in Belgium. I think they do have snowy winters, though. <clears throat> Cold, bad. Do I like where I am in the US? I do, actually, yeah. I'm very close to family, so that makes it nice. Yeah, it is pretty good. I enjoy it overall. I'm on the East Coast, so not. I'm pretty far from Washington, unfortunately. Yeah, East Coast is way better than West Coast. Let's be real. It's not even it's not even a debate, you know. Hopefully, you're on the hurricane states. Yeah, those sound pretty bad. It sounds it sounds like you're where there's twisters, right? I always thought that was more like uh, what you call it. That twisters were more or tornadoes, I guess, was more like uh, um, like midwestern area. I mean, they do have them. Kentucky tornadoes. Oh, gotcha. <clears throat> nice. Yeah, well, not nice actually. Sounds uh, the exact opposite of nice. Oh, Jomi, can I watch this video on stream? Or do you not want me to do that? At first, I thought you were from Austin, Texas. Why do you say that? Yeah, you, I mean, it's probably pretty easy to tell that I'm on the East Coast just because of this. <clears throat> I have some friends with, her, uh, with similar accents. Gotcha. That's actually really sick looking. Dang. What? It's like a drawbridge. That's super sick. Dang, Belgium seems really nice. Look at that clear sky. That clear sky. That's awesome. Beautiful. It looks beautiful. Better than Kentucky. I don't think I've ever been to Kentucky before, but they do have bourbon, so that's got that's got to count for something. Yeah, weather well, was great in September last year. Nice. I'm glad to hear that you volunteer a lot, Jomi. That seems uh, that's pretty cool of you. I like that. What is this F variable? What is F? Oh, that's this FS. I'm going to rename this to FS because F is just a terrible name. I think loading this stuff, I'm going to push up to the launch function as well. Anything that's networking related, I probably will do uh, once I actually start the game though. So this I'll do then. Setting up all the connections. I'll probably start shaders though. Tile map, I probably, oh, the render passes I won't make. Oops. I'll make the shader. I'll make the main shader. But I'm not going to make the render passes because those are like a little bit ephemeral. I can like uh, create and uncreate those pretty easily. Uh, ECS I'll do later, tile map I'll do later, cameras I'll do later, and then all the systems obviously I'll do those later too. This will just set everything up and then it'll decide what to start with. Uh, run menu with window with uh, loader. I, don't remember. I think it's just like assets. Uh, I think it's just loader. I mean, I can't remember if I call it new loader or what does this create? It's indexing. This is the problem with LSPs. I feel like they take a long time to index sometimes. You have any snow winters there? Just mild snow, very cold air, more rainfall. Oh, to Jomi. Oh, this is not good. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess it's this. I'm gonna guess it's loader. And I only, I only called it loader, load, so that I could do like load dot image or load dot sprite sheet. I'm guessing the type I called load or load er. Um, I don't know if I want to make I want to load the sprite sheet up here. I guess it doesn't matter too much because I'm planning to put everything into one sprite sheet. So, but if I ever need to, I can always split it up and that wouldn't be too hard. I'll do that. Shader, glitch dot shader. Okay, load sprite sheet shader. Jeez, I almost accidentally put a semicolon there. Terrible. Who even uses semicolons anymore? Okay. I'm going to comment this out and just make sure that everything's still running when I do run game. Make sure it doesn't crash. Oh. Yeah, I guess I, um, UI, not using, loader, I guess the type is called load. Jump yeah. with the semicolons, unreal. N the nerve of some people. I think, so. I don't know. I like Go's, I like Go's way of not using semicolons. I don't really see a need for them that often, you know? Unless you're doing uh, multiple statements on the same line, then like, yeah, I kind of get it. Most of the time I don't do that, because I think that that's just too confusing. 
I had this guy I worked with one. This is kind of, I don't know, this is maybe a mean story to tell, but I had this guy I worked with one time and uh, I was doing a review of his code and he had this like really complicated if statement block. And I was like, oh, you can like, like one of the suggestions I made was, oh, you can just uh, like split this up so it's not all on one line because I think it's a little bit complicated to look at. And he was like, uh, he's, he like, what did he, say? I don't remember exactly what he said, but he's like, he somehow implied that like, I just wasn't as experienced in coding than him. So like that's, so it's like really, it's really not that complicated of a line, but I'm just like too dumb to, to like parse it in my head or something. And I was like, oh, okay. It was weird. It was a, it was a weird moment, but he, he ended up not changing it. Or is there, or he, or he maybe didn't imply I was too stupid. He implied that he was like so smart that it, maybe he implied he was implying that he was too smart and i was, I was like oh boy oh boy i only do it for switch statements where, where do you need them on switch statements do you mean full colons or like for breaks or something maybe some languages have breaks you have to put a semicolon on i just realized it's weird that switch statements have breaks instead of like uh instead of these like why wouldn't you just do this uh you know oh case oh i see yeah like when you're putting on all onto one line gotcha well, it just feels this feels inconsistent. Like doing tab, ta doing tab indentation. Is this what it is? It's a case, right? Uh oh, the cases go back one. <coughs> Excuse me. What do you guys like more, curly braces or this or tab? Switch statements don't have break. Yeah, neither does go. Like go would technically look like this. For some reason, I like the. Uh, I don't really like the the semicolon or the um, what's it called? It's the curly braces here. I think the curly braces make it too. It makes it too weird. I don't know. I can't really explain it. It just seems weird. But like maybe I'm just biased from how it's always been. All right, that worked. So it does fall through instead. Yeah, same with go. So if you do want to have them all do the same thing, you can easily do that. You just have a bunch of fall through statements. I've used it before, but I usually, whenever I get in the situation where I have like a really big switch statement, I almost always just end up putting it into like a map or something like that. A map or a uh, um, or an array if I'm switching on a number. Yeah. All right, let's add the UI. Um, let's see here. Fall through is better because I rarely use fall through. Yeah, exactly. So you don't have to use it as free. Like you don't have to think about it as frequently. It's also just less text. It's also weird that the default behavior is to fall through. Cause like most of the time you have a switch statement because you want something different. I'm sure there was some reason of why they did that at some point. Like maybe it was easier to, to build or something like that. But <clears throat> I don't know if I want to have a, uh, I guess I could use my ECS run game here. Like I could build my menu out of systems. Where is it? Let's see, I'm gonna make this nil. I'm gonna make that, wait, this is physics systems, render systems, input systems. I just want one. I don't want it on a fixed time step. I'll probably just put it in the render systems. Let's search for this, because I almost certainly named it the same thing. Okay, I probably need to do this. I'll just have one function. I have a one function thing. Oh, I probably need to make a list of these. It's probably ecs.system. This guy, uh, clear out those tabs. We're looking good. Knitted case five, case six, case seven. And they can't do like case five, six, seven. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, then it makes sense. Then it makes sense, I guess. I don't know. I guess that's why people use pattern matching nowadays for like uh, Rust, so you can make more complicated stuff like that. I just, I almost never find myself in a situation where I would need to do something like that. Like I almost never have to do like functional pattern matching. Maybe I could, but I just never think of it because I don't use it that frequently. But I don't know. Mouse input, capture input. We will do, wait a second. Oh, here we go. And a way to exit. Oh, I'm not using the UI yet. I guess let's just put in some UI code real quick. We will do button image. This is going to be load. No, it's going to be sprite sheet. Um, let me let me see here. Let me see load. So I have to load the image. I can do sprite. What do I do? Sprite sheet dot sprite? Oh, I do get. We'll just do this. Um, oh, I still need to build the, um, what does that return? Is that a return a glitch texture or that might return a, um, returns a glitch sprite. I actually already have a um, get nine panel. Oh, I'm trying to remember how this all fits together. New nine panel sprite, sprite two nine panel. Yeah, so I'm calling, okay, so that's what it does. I really want to do this, get nine panel. Uh, oh wait, I just want to do, so we'll do that. Then we need to add the border. I don't remember, I guess it's all ones, huh? What this does is it basically slices up the sprite so you can have like a middle portion that gets scaled and you have um, the edges don't get scaled. <clears throat> it's a pretty common thing for like UIs. 
It lets you like scale the intersection, which is always the same color, and then the outside like the border. So that way the border uh, edges aren't getting scaled. You draw them like uh, unscaled, or you can scale them in certain directions, like depending on what edge they are. Let's see here, I set up a camera. I probably need to update the camera um, <clears throat> every frame. I might already do that in here. I'm kind of just copy pasting uh, example code that I've already written. Mouse position, glitch clear. This is kind of like the render section now. UI clear. Why do I do that? Oh, that was because I was, I never finished that. I got, uh, I was trying to make it so you could, um, when you click a button, it'll not click buttons behind it. But that, it ended up being a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Let's see here. Okay. Oh, I think I embedded the render pass inside of the group. I don't, I don't need to manage render passes anymore. That's kind of nice. This just builds out and I do group.draw. Cool. I'm going to do this. Clear. This is going to be button sprite, menu wrecked. I think this should work. Let's see. Oh, Atlas. Oh, I need to make an Atlas. I should maybe make this up top because I almost certainly will use the same text uh, font uh, in the game and in the thing, you know. <clears throat> I need to go generate. You know, have you ever done any projects that involve... Oops, this looks right. Actually, it doesn't look that right. Hold on. Hold on. I get my head really close. Yeah, I think I can kind of see. There's like a very, very vague outline color. It's just so big. I need a pan. I need like a background panel sprite, or I could make the color different. You know, have you ever done any projects that involve more than one programming la language for different parts of the overall project? Uh, yeah, yeah, I have. I made one. Uh, I made like a little. I tried to make a little dashboard thing one time with a uh, Go as my back end, and I used J JavaScript and Svelte for the front end. Svelte. I don't know how you say it. Svelte. It's probably Svelte. So it's got an E on there. Interesting. Yeah. It was, kind of, it was kind of fun. I really don't like, uh, I, I, I just don't like JavaScript. And I don't like TypeScript, sorry. Sorry, guys. Uh, I guess Dracula's not here, so we can talk trash about all that we want. But, you know, I, think, I don't know. JavaScript's kind of a pain to deal with. Just the whole build system is so bad. There's so much data that gets thrown at you, and, like, I don't, I don't know what's what. I don't know why there's so much printouts. Like, does it work? did it work or did it not work, you know? And if it didn't work, what did I need to fix? I did once, but was mostly because I knew one language for a specific task better than the other. Oh, okay. Yeah. Honestly, if I could use Go, like if Go made small, um, if Go had better like DOM manipulation stuff and had small binaries that it would create, it would be such a great target for uh, like WebAssembly to do web apps. Uh, also, yes, JavaScript for front end and Go for back end. Yeah. That seems like a pretty, it's a pretty standard thing. I mean, you have to use... Uh, JavaScript for the front end most of the time. JavaScript's just so painful. Python and Ruby are great for build tools. Yeah, I don't know that much of Ruby. I've done a little bit of Python, but I wrote a program in SH Ruby and Swift once and communicate with them with Stroud. Dode? I don't know what that is. S T O U D. What is that? I was PHP, Bash, PowerShell, JavaScript, and CSS. Oh, nice. Yeah, I mean, to some degree, you always have to have uh, CSS and HTML if you're going to make a web app. There's not much getting around. Oh, Oh, STD out. Oh, okay. I'm not posting that to my GitHub. That's, I don't know. I think it's okay to post bad project. I don't know if you think it's a bad project, but let's have the JavaScript interop library. TypeScript makes JavaScript less painful, though. I actually like TypeScript. Yeah, TypeScript just has, um, I don't know. I, like, I might just not like it because I don't understand it. It's just different. So, like, I don't, I don't really want to spend the time to learn it, to be honest. And you still build it through, like, uh, NPM or whatever. I mostly don't like that. I don't like the build environment for the JavaScript projects. I feel like it breaks a lot and like there's always something wrong with it. Like everybody wants to do the same thing, right? You want to build some folder that has your website in it. But like, I don't understand why I have to like manage all of my, all of these crazy dependencies to do that. Like that should just be like, that should just be the output. Like that should be like a trivial thing. But like you have all of these tools that do the same exact thing and everybody uses a different one. And like, I don't know, it's just a mess. If it just worked, I would be like, whatever, that's fine. No way I'm posting it. I had to use it a week ago. It took me a few minutes to figure out how it worked, LOL. Yeah, that happens to me quite frequently. Because you make a little prototype, you don't like expect to, I don't know, productionize it, I guess. Vite is pretty nice, but docs are awful. Yeah, I don't know, Vite. Like, granted, it's a hard problem to solve for sure. So I just, uh, I don't know. I don't, have the, uh, sta I don't have the stamina to struggle through build issues like ever again. Like if, if, if a build fails, I want it to be like my fault. Like that should be, that should be the only reason why my build failed is because it was my fault. <clears throat> but what can you do? All right, I use Vite wherever I can. Let's look it up. Search Google for Vite. 
Next generation front end tooling. I like I like the I like the sound of that. No bundling required. HMR hot module replacement. I just feel like there's so many there's so many words I don't know what they are. Like what is this? And why do I why, why do I need what is hot module replacement? Why do I need it? Rich features TypeScript JSX. I don't know what that is. CSS roll up. Isn't roll up a bundler? Oh, it's just hot reloading of the app. Hydration is a web word now. I think jo Jomi's typing with his toes today. Jeez. I've never seen someone use the uh, star key so frequently. Fully typed APIs. Nice. That sounds pretty good. Universal. I thought, so this is what's weird. It says like no bundling required. Then it says it uses rollup. Isn't rollup a bundler? Isn't bundler just thing that uh, combines all your JavaScript files into one file or something? JSX is what React uses. Yeah. Like JS, but with HTML tags, you can add to the code. Oh, okay. That's like kind of like what Svelte does, or Svelte does. Ow. Oh, Dracula's back. Oh, quick, everyone, stop talking about TypeScript. Welcome back. Oh, welcome back, Drac. Div Riots. Huh. This is a nice website. Doing some TypeScript. No, we're just, we're, we're talking shit about TypeScript, to be honest. Kind of like, uh, what do you guys think? Worst language out there? <laughs> oh, second worst? Okay, yeah, I agree. There is, there is still Bash, so no. We're just, we're just talking about front end stuff and how nice it would be if Go could do that. Well, that's what I was thinking of. Java number one. That's true. I, I forgot about Java for a second there. Thanks for reminding me. Java is definitely the worst. I think Java, Java did pave the way for a lot of better stuff though. I will say that. But compared to the languages of today, Java's not that good. I'm gonna say we had PHP, Ruby, Python, and some jQuery. It was so easy then. It's a lot of different languages. Dang. I feel like it would be it would be nice to have it would be nice to have one language that uh, like unified all this stuff and then just I don't know and just everything just works and you compile the every whatever you want and it's, I think it's a pipe dream though maybe transpiling is the way to do stuff like maybe I just transpile my Go code to JavaScript or something Java's never better than C C plus plus I don't know I think in some ways I think Java did add stuff that was beneficial I think overall I don't think it's a um, I don't think Java's like a great language but nothing's better than C, C++ and nothing will ever replace it all languages are just toys exactly dude hey if if you're not hand assembling your own code i don't know what you're doing buddy you know what i mean come on if you're not writing x86 assembly then you're just the performance you're gonna get is gonna be so subpar think about that like just the, the amount of optimization opportunities that you have by writing assembly is just come on i just don't i don't understand why everybody doesn't use it so true. That's why I write WebAssembly. There you go. Not writing zero and ones. Wow. Hey, hey you now. Hey. Regular assembly is the is the right abstraction level. Not soldering logic keys together. Lame. Exact. Yeah, that's true. You know what? You're right. Do you, are you guys familiar with FPGAs? They're like they they're these uh like they're these devices that let you pro program your own logic into them, so you can make like data pipelines and stuff like that, and they're programmable. But you literally program in like hardware like NAND gates and stuff like that. But you write in a language called VHDL typically. VHDL or Verilog. If you're not doing that, if you make a mistake in logic gates, GG. Never heard of it? Yeah. It's a little bit niche. It's like, you know, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's for like some embedded things. It's lower power. You can make higher performance systems. It's just higher overhead to build. All right. Oh, uh, let's see here. Ugh. I think I'm a little, I think I'm a little thirsty for some coffee. I'm kind of yawning over here. Let's get, uh, let's get this button done and then we'll go, then I'll make a cup of coffee about that. Deal. Panel enter. Did I copy over the panel? I don't know if I did. My panel. Then I can go generate again. I was watching about laptop trackpads. Laptop trackpads. And one of the companies used one-time flash memory. Oh, like burn-in <laughs> burn in memory. And they had a bug in their firmware. Were they F star? Oh, they were F'd. Yeah, that sounds pretty bad. I don't know why they would do burn-in memory for that. That seems like something you would want to make reprogrammable. But, you know. Who knows these days? We copied over the panel. I think the panel has uh, a little bit bigger of a border though. Oh, are they cheaper? That's kind of surprising. I don't know, I, I would kind of think that they would be more expensive to get burned in memory. Oh, double the cost. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's a good reason to do it, but like, you really gotta make sure that you're gonna do it right. Like, you gotta be very confident. Oh, 80s, 90s. Okay. We'll do menu rect. Uh, we'll do button rect. Menu rect dot uh, slice horizontal. Make it 50 pixels high, and then we'll make it 100 pixels wide. Uh, button, button, play. Button sprite, button hover sprite. Oh, I need to, and I need to get them all. Uno momento. 
Uh, do one of these guys. This, I need to do that. Okay, looking good. It's looking a little closer. All right, we got all the sprites. We have R, which is actually button wrecked. Change the color. Padding wrecked. Make the padding a little bit less. And uh, let's give it a let's give it a run. See what happens. And hover image clear. And for some reason, when I run my uh, when I run my when I run my Go programs from the Bash script, it like won't find them. I think because the folder directory is off. But that's okay. Just uh, go look. 105. Button hover sprite. Button. Oh, these are say image, but they need to say sprite. Undefined R. R dot pad. Okay. Button wrecked. Look at that. This is just so big though. I need to make the um. I wonder why it's like this. What does this look like? Yeah, this one's better. Why is that? Scale. Oh, I said the scale of these. That's why. Yeah, it's about to look way better. Give me one second. Where are you? I'm using my mouse a lot today. I don't know what it is. I'm gonna do five. That looks right. Button sprite. Button hover sprite. Button press sprite. Okay, now we're talking. Oh wait, that's the wrong one. That's a little bit better. Some weird, uh... If you look up here, there's like one little pixel off. Huh. I must have some, uh... I must have messed up some bounds or something. Maybe I need like floor stuff or something like that. Play. Then you'll click play. It'll log you in. Then I need like a disconnect button. All right, I'm gonna make some coffee and then I will BRB. All right, coffee's brewing. Aren't all web projects multi-language because you use like PHP and backend and JavaScript and front end, not counting CSS, HTML. Yeah. Unless you're able to uh, do like WebAssembly, I think you have to make it multi-language unless you use JavaScript in the background. Oh, I guess Jomi wrote the same thing. Um, yeah. Unless you use JavaScript for literally every, ta every task you do. Like Python for the builds codes, PHP for backend, JS for front end, Ruby for package manager. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know front end that much. I tried to. I tried to understand uh, how like reacting React stuff works. Like not React the front end framework, but how that sort of like how I understand it is like there's the data model, and then all of the um, like UI elements get modified based off of that. You know. So like that way it can detect like, oh, this piece of data changed. So it needs, it knows what exactly what it needs to redraw, which seems like a really interesting concept. It just seems really hard. Like it seemed uh, like I tried to use React one time. It's, it just was really hard. I couldn't figure it out, but I feel like, I don't know. I don't know if they implemented it poorly or if I'm just dumb. So maybe a little bit of both. Is there a database in JavaScript? I use Ruby for SH and build scripts. Yeah, I never really got that into Ruby. I just, I don't know. Like I, I want a language that I don't have to write build scripts for, you know? Like the only reason I have a build script on this project is because there's like a few release targets which are kind of more complicated. And then also like launching three things at once is kind of hard. I have a build script for that. Hey, Mountain Track, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream, stream friend. How are you today? Ooh, Logitech's worst nightmare. I'll watch this later. That sounds interesting. Ooh, excuse me. Almost noon. I wonder if because I'm scaling it up by f a weird number like five, what if I make it eight? I might just have some weird rounding behavior. Yeah, that looks better. I like that. I think I need to scale up by multiple of two. Well, there you go. All right, now we just need to if. This is very like uh, immediate mode GUI because you I basically do a button and I do like if the button returns true if it's being currently if it's currently being pressed. So if the button's been pressed, we basically want to. Um, <coughs> I guess we want to run. I guess we want to do this. Man, I just did another semicolon. This is, that's bad. I am off today. Yes, that's why I had to do some stuff in the morning. And then I was gonna stream a little bit and I got some more stuff in the afternoon. So congrats, yes. A nice off day. It's nice to be off. It's nice to get a break every once in a while, you know? Just take it easy. Drink a couple drink a couple, maybe five cups of coffee, five or six cups, just a couple. Drink a gallon of energy drinks. Take a nap. Maybe take a couple naps, you know. Who knows? Who knows where the day will lead? I think this will work though, because I just call this function and this function blocks. It, I do feel weird though. I feel weird because like I'm in this, I'm in a for loop, <clears throat> which is like the main menu, you know? I'm in a for loop. And then I call this other function, which is gonna, I just don't know, it just seems weird. I guess it's okay though. It just feels weird because I haven't updated yet. But so there'll just be one frame where I don't draw and I don't update, which isn't that big of a deal. I'm the only programmer left, my seniors on vacation. Nice dude, That you know what that means? That means you're the boss today. You can do whatever you want. Let's go, dude. I would have to hurt castle. <laughs> Message retracted. I tried to read it, but you, you popped it back too quickly. Look at that. Now I need a way to go back to main menu. Yes, yeah, so hit escape. It goes back to the main menu, renders that last frame, and then leaves. Oh, because Quick got 
Huh. But this quit shouldn't have been set. Quit set false. Oh, because I hit backspace on one? Hmm. What if I do just pressed? If I play, hit escape, I go back to this. Okay, perfect. I escape, I leave. Let's make an exit button too, you know, so while we're here. I really need to make a function that's just like make a button for like this whole, like I should make all my buttons like styled the same way. And I, like this is where I'm kind of thinking of like HTML, CSS stuff where they have like, here's the structure of your button and here's the styling for it. But I don't know if that's worth it to like implement that complex of a system just to like have a button. Like all I, all I really should be passing in is like the size and the text and everything like the padding should be, I should standardize that. I should standardize how it's placed, you know? Maybe I should make some button, I don't know. Hmm. Some like helper function that just makes butt good, you know? I hope I don't burn the castle. Oh, you won't, don't you worry. I wish I was working. Oh, you'll get a job soon. You just gotta apply for him. I trust you, uh, Dracula. I don't think you're gonna burn down the house, the castle, the house, whatever you work in. I'm tired of mowing and doing handyman stuff with a degree. Two weeks. Oh, you're there for two weeks by yourself? That's kind of cool. They're gonna come back and you're just gonna like trash the place. Throw, throw a big party, a big rager party. Sorry, friends, I'll go mow. I'll go mow. I'll try to go fast. All right. I'll, we'll see you when you're back. Enjoy the mowing. I hope it goes smoothly. Huh. I'm tempted. I'm not going to do it yet. Like, layout stuff is just hard. It's hard to, like, um, I guess I have the layout stuff already figured out, right? Which is just, uh, like, I will pick the rectangle that I want to draw the button on. And then everything else should be calculated. Or should I just pass in the size? I don't know. I feel like one button isn't enough. I need, we need to have two. We should also make them wider. Let's make it 200 wide. Layout's hard because you have to like pre-compute how big everything's going to be. Like if I have a row of elements, I need to be like, if if there's five elements, then they need to be this size. If there's four elements, they need to be this size. That's kind of the hard part. Or you just hard code it. Which, but that doesn't seem very good, like based off of uh, um, like different screen resolutions. I don't know though. I'd be nothing without the MDN docs. Is that Mozilla or Microsoft? What does M stand for? I'll right back, I'm going to get my coffee. All right. Yeah, Mozilla, nice. I'm happy they didn't ban Stack Overflow at work. Could you imagine? That would be terrible. I worked at one place where they blocked YouTube, and even that was bad. I think they blocked it because they didn't want people to like slack off, but there's a lot of uh, educational content on YouTube, you know? So like if someone's got this video, you search on Google for something, and it's like, here's how you do this thing. It's like, I can't go there because it's on YouTube, which is just kind of ridiculous, but... JavaScript and WebAssembly docs, all the other things web, yeah. Yeah, Mozilla's got really good docs for uh, like HTML and JavaScript. Like it's really well put together, especially cause like it's all over the place, the web standards. Yeah, that would be terrible. Could you imagine not having Stack Overflow? I wanna sip this coffee, but I think it's gonna be too hot. <clears throat> I think I'm not, I think I'm gonna ditch the exclamation point. I don't want it to be like excited play. It just like, this is just a regular play. It's just the play button, you know? Let's see here. I wish Mozilla made good browser too. <laughs> Ouch. Oof. Oh boy. That one hurts. Yeah, I actually don't use Firefox. I use Chromium. Chromium's a solid browser. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what else to do. I don't know what else to say about it. It's just a good browser. <laughs> yeah, Joey's a... Yeah, Joey. Sorry, buddy. I hate to tell you this, but unfortunately... Unfortunately, we're gonna have to suspend your uh, account here. Yeah, I don't think Firefox is... I don't know. It's like... It's just, it's just different. Like, I don't know. It's not a bad browser, I don't think. Things are just in different areas than what I'm used to. Because I've used Chromium for so long. I just can't get used to them, you know? When I right click, I want things to be in the exact same order every time. <clears throat> dev tools are good too. Yeah, I feel like, don't all the browsers have dev tools though? I guess I never really compared like Firefox versus Chrome's, but I assumed they were like pretty com comparable. How do I shift this up? I think I can, hmm, I think I can do moved. Aw, uh, move. Yeah, oh, okay, there we go. Glitch.v2, is that a function? I think I just do vec2. I wanna do z, do I have v2? Is that a thing? No, whatever. Newt, newt, welcome. Welcome Kingston, or Kai, or or how do you prefer it, Kai, everyone? Yeah, I think Firefox does have a pretty sleek looking UI, but Chrome's is like pretty classic, I think too. Welcome to the stream, either is fine. Yeah, JJ also has two names. He's got one in, he's like MD, and then he's got some symbols that I can't see. Because I don't have the font installed to see them. I'll show you. Where's JJ? Hmm. Yeah. I don't have the, I don't have the fonts for these two, whatever these two symbols are. <laughs> if you're not using IE, I'm not talking to you. You can't even install IE anymore. That's how rare it is. You thought Hall get a new font. <laughs> yeah. I just like, uh, I very rarely run into that situation and it doesn't bother me that much, I guess. 
It's pretty bad though. JetBrains Mono, best font. I use a uh, uh, sor- uh, Source Code Pro, but this is it's like a um, yeah. I don't know what font uh, is being used by um, Discord. Monaco used to use JetBrains Mono. Safari is number one at my worst browser. You don't know how many hours I spend debugging it. Yeah. Do do a lot of people use Safari? Like, is it a is it a high, like what's the percentages? I'm curious. What would you Google for this? Like browser usage percentages that we're talking holy chrome look at that oh safari is the second most popular i did not even realize oh is that because of ios like is safari safari on uh phones too i guess it probably would be wouldn't it edge is creeping up there edge is built on chrome or chromium base right firefox is pretty high samsung internet opera i don't even know what uc browser is but it's pretty low android browser i don't know what that is Internet Explorer is almost zero. Safari is used by all the Mac scrubs that aren't tech literate to know the difference between browsers. Yeah, like just like Jomi. I mean, you, you described you described Jomi perfectly. I'm just kidding. I'm just messing around. iPhones force all browsers to use Safari as their rendering engine. Oh, really? Oh, I think you just said I like Safari. Sorry. <laughs> I used to use. Oh, I used Edge even on Linux. I didn't know I could do that. There was a weird bug here though. Huh? What's Firefox containers? This? Parts of your online life separated into color-coded tabs. Cookies are separated by container, allowing you to use the web with multiple accounts and integrate Mozilla VPN for extra layer of privacy. Oh, interesting. That's kind of cool. I have like a different account. I have like different accounts set up. So I have like a streaming one that I use for when I stream. But my uh, like search history and any personal stuff that I have in my browser wouldn't show up during a stream. Which sounds kind of similar, but yours is probably a little bit better integrated. Because mine's an actual separate window. Which I actually, like I want it to be like that. Um... I need to move this zero x direction, and then I want to move it negative. I'm gonna do. I need to make uh, variables here. Button height, button width. Oops, that's supposed to be height. Um, I'm gonna move it negative. Uh, button height. This one's actually gonna go positive. I think positive is down. Exit might be above play here. Oh, I was gonna make it a 64. Float 32. Little typo. Try again. Yeah, I did the wrong, wrong direction. Oh, and the buttons still do the same thing because I copy pasted that logic. On the exit button, I need to shift downward, shift upward, and then here I need to do uh, quit uh, quit dot set true. I think that's the lot. That's the uh, thing. Play exit. Look at that. Seems like a good commit point to me. Why do I have so much stuff? Oh, I was doing uh, wait new file. That's so weird. I don't know why this didn't get committed last time. What did I do last time? Oh, I never committed this. Huh, okay. Actually, let's look at the binary. Okay, that was just some stuff. Okay, I need to move these back out. Um, I hate it when I do that. When I make a change, I forgot to commit the last thing. And so I now I have like two commits and all the changes and I just need to like divide them up. Luckily, my code changes were in really different spots. So cool. That looks done to me. All right. Next things next is going to be um, all bosses use Safari. Oh, like all of your bosses do. So you have to, that's the one you have to make perfect. Now I want to add, I want to add some like, uh, um, like for example, I have three things that are running, right? You have a client running, you have a proxy running, you have a game server running. If any of those go down, I want everything to try to reconnect. I need to add logic to do that, basically. Technically, the server doesn't have to reconnect anything because it's only a hosting. It doesn't reach out to talk to anything. Um, proxies, if they reconnect, or if the server goes down, the proxy's up. The proxy needs to try to reconnect to the server. And... Clients just need to reconnect to the proxy. I think that's all. So it's basically error handling on um, disconnections. What time is it though? How long have we been streaming for? Solid hour 30. That's not bad. I like these days where we like we actually get a lot done. Not using paid fonts. Amateurs use Mona Lisa. I don't know what that is. I like how I, go- I Google Mona Lisa. And like not even the first. The first thing isn't even the Mona Lisa. You know what I mean? It's literally a font. That's the top search result. Isn't even this like um, legacy art that everyone loves to go see. It's just a font. That's the that's what people look for when they search for Mona Lisa. Is this it? You have to pay for it? $120? Get out of here, dude. No way. You've seen the Mona Lisa in real life? That's why you don't even need to Google it because you've already seen it. It's pretty underwhelming. Dang. Google knows you search for fonts more than art. That's true. I don't think I've ever searched for art in my entire life. Maybe I've searched for... There's that one where it's like the guy screaming he's on like a he's on a dock or something like that and he's like got his hands 
it's like screaming you know and the in the sky's all all uh swirly two hundred dollars wait how do you how do fonts work on browsers can't you like cd and do you cd and load the font to the user because like why doesn't th why doesn't uh why don't these symbols pop up like doesn't discord vend the font to me why don't these work the scream that's what it's called yeah you know what i mean like shouldn't there be a um shouldn't there shouldn't the can choose use a font hosted online or use the one installed oh so the one i have installed on my system doesn't have all the symbols then gotcha interesting free trial what else do you need other than this use helvetica if it's not available use comic sans gotcha okay could you imagine him falling back to comic sans love it reduced character set so weird who's gonna pay for a font the funny thing about Mona Lisa is it's a really small painting. If you turn around, you see a gigantic painting. Oh, really? It looks pretty big. Like, it looks like a pretty big painting. I've never seen it in person, though. Oh, you bought it? <laughs> I didn't mean. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to talk any trash. I'm just. Uh, it's interesting. Do you think it reduces fatigue? Or it just looks nice? I mean, one of the things that I've realized is like I sit at the computer for so freaking long every day and like code that it probably makes sense to invest like i invested in a nice keyboard i have a nice mouse i have a nice desk i have a nice chair but like i've invested in everything i like source code pro though i don't even know if i like this particularly more than it's a very nice font i will say that what does the zero look like that's nice oh this is too expensive for you different terminals of capitals i don't know what that means distinct lowercase connections i don't know what that means like why is this useful let's be real i don't read code i don't need a nice font if, 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 I, if I have to read code for more than five minutes, I just rewrite the function. I'm just like, you know what? That's an interesting, uh, that's a, this is a very interesting uh, script type cursive stuff. I'd have to use it in order to know if I like it. Yeah, well, you can get the free one, which has a reduced set of characters. I don't like uh, coding ligatures. I know some people like them. I just don't like it. Oh, huh, that's kind of interesting. But like, this isn't, a, this isn't a divide sign. So you can't just like put this in your code. Ooh. So if I, buy, if, I buy this, if I buy this font, can I CD and host it to my website? Yeah, I was gonna read this, but oh, I want to look at web font actually. Embed the purchased web font into your website. If you only use static images with one of our fonts in your website, the desktop. Okay, huh? It's weird. It's weird that you can put it because then couldn't someone just download it? Like, is it a different font? Is the web font different than the desktop font? So if anybody has a website, like they have to embed this in their head, right? Font. Huh. <laughs> Maybe they like. Unity <laughs> commits crimes. <laughs> Let me say little cash. Hype font. What is this? Huh. Is it a crime if I just down like if I just download this? I don't know. That's kinda weird. Cause none of these look like it. This one does. Oh, that's the italic one. That's kinda weird. This is the request? I don't know. Can I just curl this can I just curl this request and uh, get the font? Who knows? <sighs> I'm not gonna worry about it, but I feel like they've already given it to me. You know what I mean? By putting it in their website. I guess technically it's copyrighted, so like it would be illegal for me to use it. Oh wow, that's the big one. Oh, that's tiny. That's so small. That's like the size of a person's head. I like how these people are just looking at the looking at the camera. Poor folks. That's a big painting. Wow. Why is this one? Why did this one get so popular? This one's way cooler looking. That's a big one. I like how there's a lot of uh, height variety of the paintings. You know, like they're not just like a grid of pictures. I like that. It's even smaller than this guy's head. I guess he's closer. We're watching in VR, boys. Are you feeling nauseous yet? Sorry, I'll stop. <laughs> I don't know how to get out of this. Okay, there we go. That's making me nauseous. Yeah, that's really small. I didn't realize it was that small. What does this say? I don't know. VR stream next? Yeah. V VR MMO? Now we're talking. Now we're talking. That's cool. I didn't realize it was so tiny. Let's see. Oh, could you imagine VR coding? That sounds really hard. Okay. Launch a little tmux. Actually, I'm gonna go to CMD first, then I'm gonna tmux. Um, okay, let's do the proxy and server first. So what we'll do is we'll have uh, we'll have the server. I'm gonna cancel the proxy, and then I'm just gonna launch the proxy from Emacs. I guess if the server is already running, well, what I want to do is I'm gonna launch it from Emacs, and then I'm gonna go here, cancel the server, then I should restart the proxy, and then I should be able to launch this guy. That should all just work. Oh, that did work. That's kind of surprising. I opened the YouTube emoji tab and the elbow cough was already loaded. The others weren't. YouTube, yeah, dude, you've cashed it. They've got you figured out. If jo they have a, they have an, an engineer write in. If Jomi ten elbow cough. Oh, look at this. That's not very good. That's strange. I need to re, uh, I need to remake the camera. Let's fix that. I need to do like camera dot update up here. 
Oh wait, doesn't it happen already? Oh, I need, wait a second. Does this do camera.update? Hmm, what is this? Oh, I need to um, run menu. I just need to do these two things. I'm surprised this doesn't happen in the group though. When I do group.clear, why don't I do camera.update? I don't know. Here we go. Welcome back. <clears throat> Let's do this. We'll put this over here. I'm gonna go back to the terminal though. Run this. <coughs> Excuse me. How's the interface going? Good. I don't know if you just saw it. It was, uh, we have a play button and an exit button and we're able to log into the game now dynamically. But I do need to have it so that I can, uh, oh, thank you. I feel blessed. I'm trying to make it so that uh, if the proxy disconnects or the server disconnects, like the game doesn't stop. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, so this failed. Oh, because I'm in gob encoding mode. I'm gonna change my encoding type to the binary one. Um, there was something else I wanted to do. I need to go here. Did you change your wallpaper? Yeah, I uh, I have it looping. <laughs> I have like a, it just loads a new wallpaper every day. What do you think? Like it? Yeah, it's a K I have KDE Plasma, so. Actually, let's try this. Let's launch the proxy. Yeah, that fails, okay. But if I run this, I run that, I run this, I click play. Now I'm connected. That happens. This gets triggered on the client. If I relaunch the proxy, yeah, user disconnected. Okay. Server's still trying to send the updates. Oh, so there's this, uh, yeah, hmm, I'm trying to think. There's a lot of like different disconnect scenarios that I need to manage. Let me try this really quick. I just wanna see if this works. Play, why am I still reading bytes? Oh, because I've started, um, yeah, so what's happening now is every time I launch a new one, it makes a new connection as a new user. But it, uh, the old ones never get disconnected. Hey, look, it looks kind of like an MMO now. Look at that. Yeah, I just get tired of my wallpaper, so I switched up a lot. <laughs> Mine's a giant Java logo. <laughs> Dang, you're ruthless. I love it. Yeah, there's a lot of dead people. I like Mohawk guy. He looks pretty sick, huh? Oh, look, they're slowly fading away. I wonder what, um, if I print anything when they time out. So the people are timing out still. I'm just curious if this stops. It should stop after like 30 day, 30, sorry, 30 seconds or 60 seconds, I don't remember. Yeah, so he timed out. So he stopped sending. Server's still sending though, that's not good. That's kind of weird. Oh, maybe he hasn't. Mohawk guy. Yeah, dude, he's a, he's a rocker for sure. Oh, he's still there. Oh, he just timed out. Okay, now we really have to wait. How long is the timeout? Well, this is running. That's what I want. 60 seconds. But I think, oh, I guess the, um, uh, okay, user timed out. Perfect. User disconnected 10. Okay. So everything stops eventually. It just takes 60 seconds. That's kind of like the hard exit case. It would be nice if the user, when I hit the exit button or I hit escape, instead of quitting, I clean everything up. I need to do that first, but I'm glad that the, like the bad scenario works too, where I just kill it. The server and the proxies do handle that case. That's good. That's a positive. So if I'm, okay. Well, I guess let's fix that first. Yeah, it's kind of weird though. I start this thread in parallel, client receive. I think that's the only one I start in parallel though. So I really just need to exit this one. The problem is that it blocks. I don't know how safe it is though to, um, like for example, let's say I do this. When uh, when quit is triggered, this function will, will break. So I could do like clean up here. I could close the connection, you know? But that's gonna make this, that's gonna make this um, have, an, have a read error. Cause it's gonna say, oh, the connection's closed now. Error, read error, connection already closed, something like that. Which isn't that bad, I don't think. Cause that exits. We'll just note that down. Anyone feeling drained today? I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling a little bit tired, but I feel like I'm just always tired. I'm like in a constant state of being tired. There's no getting away from it. Client con, where is that? Oh, I make a client con. Let's do this then. Check, the, check out this sweet deal. I'm gonna do a uh, little close function, c.con.close. I don't think I need to clean up anything on the encoder. I'm actually going to close. I'm tempted to do defer, but I'm actually just gonna call it here because it's such a big function right now. It's kind of, uh, I feel like defers are good for like a small function, but this is kind of a very large function. All right, let's give it a shot. So now it should disconnect instantly. Yeah, read error into file. So I closed it, but everything logged out instantly. Feels like the world just collapsed around me daily. I'm sorry, I'm sure you'll get through it. For some reason, JavaScript is garbage collecting an array that's still in use. Hmm, yeah, I don't know. That's a toughie. Have you tried telling it to stop? Hey, no, don't do that. So that's good. Um, eh, I'm gonna rename this uh, commit. Instead of cleanup, I'm gonna say close. I'll try to, yeah, give it, maybe like a, either send it an email or a handwritten note potentially. Yeah, say so don't eat that array. 
bad JavaScript. Flap its wrist a little bit. Okay, let's look at the proxy. The proxy on the host, on the like WebSocket hosting side is always okay. Because if the proxy crashes, it relaunches. The only reconnection it needs to do is to the server. So the only thing here, the only thing here is that, <coughs> hmm. Okay, so if the proxy goes down, it needs to retry to connect to the server, but if the, but the client is gonna lose connection to it, so the client needs to retry to connect to the proxy. So that means that this client connection, I'm trying to think here. So there's gonna be a read error, which is gonna cause that to exit, I think. Let's, get, let's do a little experiment. We run the client, connect, go here, kill that. Now, uh, I think if I restart this, like this isn't gonna, yeah, fail to write message, WebSocket closed, fail to read frame header. Yeah, so now we can't send any of the messages. Also, this is in some weird state. I don't really understand. Maybe it's uh, here actually. Oh yeah, so this is the problem now. The server doesn't know that this person disconnected and the server doesn't have any timeout features. The server probably needs features. I should be taking notes because I feel like there's so many little things. Oops, here. Mm -hmm. Uh, server needs to timeout if needs timeout logic. Okay. But the uh, client needs to reconnect and that's kind of needs to be handled here. So he's going to have a read error <clears throat> and he's going to exit this. I feel like I should go into like a reconnect loop or something like that. So like, for example, this, uh, let's see here, like what I should be doing is, um, all of this login, all this connection logic, uh, it's actually kind of challenging, right? Because I have this connection that needs to be passed into other systems when they send things. Maybe I make the client connect. I, base I should have a client connection object that I make here. I pass the client connection object everywhere. I think I don't pass con anywhere, do I? Perfect, okay. So this is gonna handle, I think the client connection will handle the retries. I need to start a thread that's basically like, uh, um, that basically does all of this stuff for you. So instead of doing just a client receive, That'll be one go routine, but if this ever exits, we need to try to reconnect. Um, I'm gonna call it reconnect loop. That way it's clear. So when I make a, I, uh, I should probably do this too. Funk new client con um, URL string, but I'm not gonna set a con. That's gonna be null. Sorry about negative posts today. All good, buddy. You're having a rough time. My brain is dead right now. I have to stop coding. Yeah, I get. I do get to that point as well. Especially like that time I did the eight hour stream. Like towards the end of that, I was like, I don't even remember what I was talking about. I don't even know if it was legible or anything. You need increasing prices? Uh-oh. Yeah. Good thing I don't have to use Unity. I wonder, I don't know. I wonder if I would, uh, I wonder if I'd be able to launch games faster if I used Unity. I almost feel like if there was just like good open source rendering libraries, like that's pretty much the crux of game dev. Or like the, the, the biggest thing that engines provide is that is like the rendering library. If there was like a really good 3D rendering library for Go, I would basically, and like, I, I would, I don't know. I feel like I'll, I would be like as productive as possible. I don't know. I'm sure there's other stuff. Like it's nice, I guess it's nice to be able to like place stuff on a map, but like that's not like the editor I mean. I don't know, maybe I'm underselling it, but I don't think it's a bad engine. I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna, co I'm gonna comment all this out. Copy it here. There's a Rust engine with an editor. See, I don't, but the thing is, I don't really want an engine. I want like a, uh, I want a framework like Bevy, I think is good. Or uh, what's the other one? Amethyst. I don't know if that's an engine or if it's just a framework, but like all, I guess all I really want is an ECS and like a rendering library. And I don't want them to be coupled together necessarily. Here, I don't think it can fail, so that's okay. Oh, and then I do client con, go client con dot reconnect loop. Oh, I need the world though, don't I? There's no point to not make this higher up. Uh, world, network, channel. I'm not super, I'm, I don't know. I'm kind of torn on the network channel. This I don't need anymore though. Cause this is gonna be called from the reconnect loop. This has a URL. Look at me, look at me writing function comments. Are you kidding me, dude? Uh, I tried GGEZ with Bevy ECS, but it didn't really work together. And that's why I started to make my own ECS again. Oh boy, this again. I've seen, I've seen this story. I've seen this story, I think. I feel like Rust would be, uh, I don't think it would be that challenging to make a Rust ECS. Godot with Rust, why not just Bevy? I'm gonna pass the uh, network channel into the new client connection. Do I need the world? Why do I need the world? Oh, that's kind of a hack though, huh? I should probably make a world update message and then I don't need the world. So I'm not gonna pass it in, but I'm gonna temporarily. I should have probably made ECS in Rust. Bevy seems a little too complicated. I want something more rudimentary. Delete the world. No. I never, I never delete the world. Who needs it? 
Nobody. I do. Well, it's like, uh, what, how I have it set up is I have a channel that separates this thread from the main game loop thread. But here I'm accessing the world directly. So before it was like the world was separated and it was only accessible from one thread, but now I'm writing to it from this other thread. So this is like a race condition. And there could be some, uh, like, uh, uh, there could be some concurrent map access and that happens because of this that could crash. Micro quad, that sounds really familiar, but I don't remember what it is. Yeah, Bevy does seem a little too complicated. The problem, I think the problem that, I don't really know how to express this. I feel like um, Bevy, Bevy tries to like do too much for you, you know? Like I don't really want them to handle the rendering and stuff like that. Oh, is it an ECS or something? Is MicroQuad an ECS? I don't know. I feel like Bevy just had like some of the default systems. Yeah, like it's nice if you're just like getting started. Like it makes it really easy to get started. But like, I don't know, like it's, it's really got to handle like all the cases for me. Else now I need to learn how it, how it got set up. And then I need to make my own default systems, you know? Like, I don't really see that much. Yeah, you can use Bevy's module separately, though. Yeah. Maybe I just don't understand, like, the component interfaces that I need to have to support, like, their rendering or to support their physics or whatever they have, you know? It, it, like, it might just be a documentation issue. Yeah, I also like to have a blank slate. I'd rather call functions than have, like, load module, you know? Like, I'd rather just, like, hey, pass this function and that you want to execute every uh, tick. Yeah, I, like I think if I did Rust, I would probably use Bevy, to be honest. Or if there was a simpler one. Because Bevy does uh, multi-threading for you, which, had, which is a great benefit. Like, uh, that's, a, that's a challenge for sure. I had to turn it off when I was doing my benchmarks. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it really is. So I'll pass it in here. I need to have this, though. Um, uh, here. Do a network channel. A network channel. Now that's passed in. New client, yeah, I passed that there. Reconnect loop just takes the URL and the world. One day I'll make a multi-threading game. Too fast with multi-threading. <laughs> Hang on, replace that with one day I'll make an actual game. Yeah, I agree. It's hard to finish a game. It's too easy to get sidetracked with software projects. It's like, oh, that'd be cool to do this thing. I literally might do, wait, I don't need this. I need to do c.con equals con though. And then I do um, world. Uh, Client connection. I actually don't like the idea of associating a network channel here. I'm gonna leave it for now. But what happened? What I got? Space Invaders clone from my console. Yeah. Hey, that was an impressive accomplishment. That looked really nice too. Um. By the way, do you know math for cards? So they would be center and circle shape. What do you mean? Like slate a spire. Um. I I don't think I understand exactly the question. What do you mean by circle shaped? What do you mean by centered? But if client receive exits i might have a return an error there might be some errors where i want to how do i how do i do math so i get coordinate to place cards in the center of the screen so you have like you have a rectangle you want to place that rectangle in the center of the screen is that what you're saying like uh because the, the card is just a rectangle right and then you're going to draw a sprite inside of that rectangle and then you're just trying to offset that to the center of the screen but uh for th for this loop oh oh hey x hype how's it going welcome to the stream i'm going to show you in discord okay yeah, but you angle it. Mm. Yeah, send in Discord. I'll, I'll take a look. But for this for this reconnect loop, what I think I'm gonna do is I think I'm just gonna loop forever. Well, actually, I might loop until um, cause uh, once I exit this, huh? Cause I need this to exit on something, you know. So once close happens, then I can exit this loop. Basically, I think I'll probably do something like that. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna have a loop forever. Just because that's a little bit easier i think and i think what the logic will look like though is i'm just going to dial e i'm going to try to dial um if it fails oh I, it'll probably panic though here so I'll, I'll probably change this instead of check error it's probably just going to do um uh like if it's a error that or if there's an error we're just going to like loop back to the start you know and then we're going to sleep there we'll probably sleep for a little bit just so we're not like continually like uh just so we're not continually like uh, uh spamming the server let's see Image search. Gotta add useful comments. I'm reading JavaScript or Delk is the previous one. Dang. Oh, good, Jomi. Have a good night. I'll see you later. Is this the same image? Oh, see. Oh, you're talking about angling it around the center. Um. I watched the tutorial where he draws a circle, then he calculates stuff. Oh. Yeah. That's that was kind of the first thing I was thinking. You'd have some really wide circle. Like if you imagine a really big circle that's centered like way below, then the circle kind of like arcs like this, you know. Then you can just like place cards around that circle and like uh, you would basically calculate the angle. Like if you take a vector from the center of the circle outward, you know, 
then you can place things and you know their angle too because the angle is just going to be the angle of the vector from the x-axis that's like the first thing i'd think of um and that'll give you this nice like uh, curve where the tops are kind of curved you know like that's probably the easiest thing and then you just then basically you change the circle size to customize how much of an arc like if you make a really small circle they'll be really tightly clustered together and they'll be they'll be like very fanned out you know this is a very wide circle and then you just draw them in order from left to right you have to pre-compute a little bit though because you have to be like oh i have two cards then i want card one here and i want card two here and if you have three cards you'd like one two three you know you have one in the middle when you have an odd number and you if you don't have an odd number you have two that neither of them are, is in the middle i think that that's probably the easiest way to do it you might be able to like uh, draw them in a line and then shift them up a little bit when they're closer to the center and then angle them out to the right when they're further right or further left. But that would be a lot more, um, the circle way would be like the most generic way probably, where you have this like one circle concept and everything is off of that. The other way, uh, where if you do them in a line and then you just like tilt them depending on where they are, that'd be a little bit more hard coded, you know? But it might be easier to like rationalize like if I'm this far from the center, then I shift down depending a little bit, you know what I mean? Based off of how far I am from the uh, vertical, this uh, center line, like the X center line, you would shift down a little bit and then you'd tilt a little bit more. If that, I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know, does that help? Is that useful? Yeah, this looks very like circular. Like you know the ang you know the rotation of this, because every rectangle you're drawing, right? So you have to draw a rectangle for each thing. And so you're just picking a position on the on the circle based off of like the theta angle that it is. And the theta angle that it is is the rotation of the card to rectangle two, and the uh, like tangent position on the circle is the center point of the card. And then you just have like a a delta angle, and like the delta angle is like how far each card is apart. That's what I would think at least. I'd probably do the circle method if it was me. That just seems easier and more uh, flexible. And I don't think it would be like that challenging. I think the math will be a little bit hard, but I think drawing it on a piece of paper will make it a little bit clearer on what's going on. Yeah, that was thinking, but video was doing some big maths. I don't see why you would need to do that big of math. You would need like geometry, right? But you're not going to need anything past geometry, I don't think. Like, so it would just be angles and uh, distances from a circle. And then you, then you just kind of like shift the center of the circle downward until like the cards kind of line up, you know, like a little bit less than radius, probably the radius of the circle. That way, those cards are like a little bit poking above the thing. Can I check if this client connection is closed? Netcon. That's big math, though. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, like, yeah. It, it, it can definitely get tricky. <clears throat> I want to do... Oh, what is it? It is a net.con. Oh, I just want to look for con. Oh, no, there's no way to tell. Hmm. I was kind of hoping I'd just be able to check. Uh, is the connection closed? If the connection's closed, then try again. But I guess if this exits, not everyone went to college. I know, I don't mean to... I didn't mean to uh, say anything like that, but... Yeah, no, like it can get it can get complicated. Yeah, I think I think uh, what helps me though is just drawing out the picture. I can do a little uh, I can do a little sketch up if you if the, if you want of what I think it would look like. I think it would look like this. Um, let me try to get my let me get my ta drawing tablet really quick. Oh, now we're talking. This brings me back. This this is what I used to make some of my first YouTube videos. But then I kind of switched over to in writing like coding animations. So oh gosh. This is going to be rough, guys. I'm sorry. It's hard to draw straight lines. But this is like the bottom of your screen. And this has a center point, right? And then uh, you're going to have some circle, which is like centered here. And it goes like this, right? And this circle is going to go all the way around, you know? So if we say like, um, if you say this is your um, like zero, zero point of the circle, uh, and then we'll say like this is like zero, zero degrees, zero degrees, um, then like if you want to place one card right so you want to place one card you want to place it at 90 degrees on the circle one card you'd place it here and then so so uh what that looks like is this vector right that's 90 degrees and then the length is the radius of the circle i'm trying i'm trying guys yeah i mean you can use radians if you want to but that's going to look like this vector right so you just take the circle uh so now you need to get the so this is your zero zero point right well so like because this is like, I don't know like where your coordinate zero zero starts on your rendering library, but like assuming it starts here, you would shift the circle over there by like the width, the width of the window, you know, you shift it right by the width of the window divided by two. And then you'd shift it down uh, by probably a little bit 
less than the radius and like that the shifting down part is where you might want to customize it if you shift it down uh more then you just have like the tips of the cards coming out if you shift it up higher then you're gonna have more of the card showing and that's kind of like a personal preference sort of thing but it'll be very close uh the down shifting part is going to be very close to the radius of the circle probably but probably a little bit less um so now you have this point right and then so all you need to do is add in um the x and y position of each of these uh, vectors you know it's so like there's this one and the y of that is going to be equal to uh, the radius times the sine of the angle like this is the general formula for each of these and then the x is going to be equal to r times the cosine of the theta you know i like that's the general formula so for this red line uh sine of 90 degrees is going to be one so it's going to be so y is going to be equal to r and then a cosine of 90 degrees is going to be zero. So X is going to be equal to zero. So you're going to shift it up by that X, Y pair now. Um, and then after that, you're just like, you need to pick some theta of how much you're going to shift to the right or the left. We're going to call this like, uh, here, I'm going to use a different color. We'll do green. Now, like you want to shift to the left or right. We'll call it like theta tick. So uh, what you want to do now is you have your center point, which is 90 degrees. So uh, let's say we want this vector. Oh, sorry. And then the, the last part you need is like the rotation part. Uh, let me go back to R. Um, for this one, all you need to do, I guess it depends on like how your sprites are oriented. But uh, like, hmm, like if your card is oriented like this already, then when you're at 90 degrees, uh, you're not going to have any rotation. And then like uh, when you go to the green one, sorry, I'm kind of jumping the gun a little bit. You want to tilt it a little bit. You know what I mean? Uh, that's going to be like... Um, uh, well, so if you think about this one, if you think about this one, you kind of have like this uh, 90 degree arc, which is this, right? And then you just minus the theta tick, uh, or sorry, you take like, uh, you do 90 minus the angle that you are. So like, for example, this red one is technically like 90 degrees, which is the center line, 90 degrees, uh, minus the, uh, the theta that we plugged in, which is 90 degrees in this case, you know, and then this one's going to be the center line 90 degrees minus uh, whatever this angle is. So this one's going to be equal to 90 degrees minus theta tick, right? And that's how you get the rotation of the card. Uh, but then the X and Y that you need to have for this is uh, is calculated the exact same way. So now it's going to be Y equals R times sine of uh, 90 minus theta tick, like that. And X is going to be equal to R times cosine. And sorry for my handwriting. It's really hard to write on these tablets. 90 minus theta tick like that and this is an r so like that's probably what you that's probably how i would approach it so now you have the now you're basically getting the points on uh like this one you're getting the points on this one and this one like you're finding those points in in the space you know like the world space uh and all you need to oh yeah you're finding the points and then you're finding the rotation of the cards and that's basically all you need now you just need to draw the sprite at that position um with uh with whatever rotation you calculated as well and does the rotation formula make sense? It's going to be uh, 90. Assuming your cards are oriented this way. Because like if your cards are oriented this way by default, then it'll be a different equation, you know? Like assuming they're like vertical already, which is probably pretty uh, accurate. It'll just be 90 minus whatever your theta is. So if your theta is 90, like in the red case, it would be zero. You wouldn't have to rotate them at all, right? But if it's like 85 or 80 degrees, let's say. Let's say the theta take is 10 degrees, um, then... Uh, It'll be, uh, what's it called? Uh, the rotation will be 90 minus 80, which would be 10 degrees. So you now you need a 10 degree tilt because you're 10 degrees off. Does that make sense? Top right hand corner with the option to hide and show or the bottom of the screen. You're going to hide divided by two radical. Oh, you need to just make a bottom nav bar with hide and show button. That's easier. Isn't that polar coordinate conversion? Yeah, this is basically polar coordinates. And the big trick is just like uh, placing your cards on a circle. If you divide by, oops, if you divide by Y, by, if you divide y by sine, you get r. Yeah, r r should be something that you've predetermined. Like uh, r r would come from um, like here's a, here's a few examples. Let's say you make r. This is the screen. Sorry, the blue was the screen the whole time, right? Let's say you make r really low, really small. Now you're gonna have this circle that sits like this. You know, so you're gonna have a really tight cluster. Golly, I'm gonna switch my mouse for this. You have this really tight cluster. Of cards and let's see that let's say that you have uh let's say you have r is really wide like really really wide like way wide now you're gonna have this like low kind of spread 
of cards. You know what I mean? It's just like if you have a really small circle, they're going to be really tight, you know, and it's not going to spread out as, as far. But if you make the circle radius really high, uh, it'll spread out a lot. I don't know. Does, it, does this help? Does this help out? This is what I would do. I have not done this before, but this is how I would do it if I had to. I don't, I don't know if it'll work 100% like that, but I kind of hope it does. Um, I wanted to get this working. <clears throat> Let me add to-dos just for just so I don't lose track of what I was trying to do. To-do, um, this needs to exit when... Um, so if the user or if the user exits the game, basically like the loaded part of the game, and they're gonna call th this client con dot close is gonna be get triggered. I guess this whole thing's gonna get cleaned up, isn't it? Can I just have like an atomic bool? Is there that? Or oh, there we go. Bool. Load store swap. Cool. We'll use this. We'll have a uh, sync dot atomic. Oh, it's, it'll just be atomic dot bool. I don't know. Do I need to do like new? I guess it's just by default will work like that. We'll do this, sync atomic, and then we have an atomic bool. And then now when this gets ha this gets called from another thread, uh, so this will be thread safe then, it'll just be uh, c.closed um, store true. This actually, ah, this, this loop, uh, I think atomics would be bad if, um, uh, if this was running a lot. If this was like a tight loop, I think it would be bad to use an atomic. Um, but I think because... I think because uh, we're not going to be looping, this loop's going to be very slow. Like this is the situation where the proxy disconnects and we're going to loop till we reconnect to it. Like, so it's going to, we're going to have a sleep timer in there too, you know? Um, uh, let's do this. Um, we'll call it quit. I don't know. Quit, false, while, quit, before, not, till, not quit. And then here we will do um, C dot uh close dot load so we'll load quit with the bool atomically and then we'll check it again actually i'm gonna put this up here so the very first thing we do is we check if we quit because what's gonna happen here is we're gonna have to do if uh error not equal to nil uh this is gonna panic right now i'm just gonna leave it as a panic though i guess technically i should time dot sleep but whatever this i can or er, do you have any more questions about this maybe i should have tried graphics okay yeah give it a shot see how it goes I should try graphics programming. My interest in math could benefit that. Yeah, I think uh, there's a lot of math in graphics programming for sure. Are you using evil keybinds or just Emacs? No, I just use native Emacs. I don't use evil evil mode. No, I uh, I have a keyboard with uh, layers on it, so I can do I do some VI movement keybinds because I have like a function key that I press, and then I can like move around. Like I don't have to hit Control A and Control P to do this, so I can do it in one hand, which is kind of nice. But um, yeah, I just use regular Emacs. I really, um, I would love a different text editor that had Emacs key bindings, but was a little bit more recently made. Because Emacs just has a lot of bloat and a lot of stuff that I don't use. But I, I like Emacs overall. Are you, a, are you a, an Emacs user or a Vim user or a Helix user or something? I could never use Emacs. Oh, Neo Vim, gotcha. Have you tried Helix? Everybody that I talk to likes Helix nowadays. Yeah, I would love it if Emacs was as thin as, at least the default Emacs was as thin as... Uh, like Vim or Neo Vim, I'd love that. Because Emacs is slow sometimes, which is just like, it's ridiculous how slow Emacs is in some situations, like big files and things like that. E yeah, we all, or I don't know, I like Emacs at least. It's just kind of what I got used to. I want to make my own full-fledged game from scratch. It's kind of fun, yeah. Yeah, definitely use free art. If you need speed, try threading it. Parallel is your friend unit, yeah. Just don't feed it for a month. What, don't feed Emacs? I don't, I don't remember what I said to, uh, <laughs> I don't remember what I said. Sorry. I assume you're talking about Emacs. Oh, it's a little bloated. Yeah. Yeah, it's getting up there. I keep telling I keep telling it. Hey man, you gotta lay off the uh bonbons. You gotta lay off the bonbons and french fries. But it just keep it just keeps installing packages before I know it. So here's what this let me just like logically walk through this. Um if we haven't closed the connection because we're exiting the game, then uh we try to load this. That's just checking for the next loop to see if we've closed. Um, we try to dial the connection. If it fails, we're gonna panic right now temporarily, but we'll eventually fix this. What it'll eventually do, actually, let's just do it right now. Uh, print line, um, connection failed, error. Um, so we'll, do, we'll print out that just so that the client has a little bit of logging. And then we'll do time.sleep. Uh, I'm just gonna do one second. I think if I launch this, just for like debugging, I want this to happen fast. But I'll eventually go through my to-dos and I'll fix this. I think I'll probably do like 10 
to 30 seconds. Or maybe, uh, also, there might be some reason to do some random value. Because, like, let's say you have, uh, this is, like, obviously I'm not going to have, like, 100 people, probably. <laughs> but uh, if you had 100 people all re trying to reconnect at the exact same interval, because everyone's going to deconnect at the same time, they'll try to reconnect at the same time. That's probably bad. So you probably want to have some random value. Simultaneously. That's a mouthful. Andrew with VS Code. Yeah, a lot of people like VS Code. Helps me avoid indentation issues. Yeah. VS Code getting bloated. That's what happens with software in general. Is The older software is, the more bloated it becomes. And then it's like, at some point, you're like, I'd rather just use something else. But some, some, uh, some things do a good job staying thin. Like, I think, I don't know. I almost said Linux. But Linux... Linux is surprisingly thin for how like long it's been around. I will say that. I'm gonna make it two seconds. Um. Oh, and I need to. So if the error fails, I need to continue, right? Because I don't want to uh, try to connect. I'll print out the connection response though. Otherwise, we can turn it into a net connection with a, bi a binary messaging WebSocket connection, and um, then we we'll, then we'll start just receiving on it. And if this ever crashes, this is going to error out. It's going to pop back into this loop and then restart the whole process. So if you had one running and you just disconnected, it's going to immediately try to reconnect. I wonder if I should put a sleep here. Because if there was some really small hiccup, we can reconnect really quickly, which is probably worth it. So it's probably worth it to have the first one just like immediately reconnect. I don't know. I don't really know a lot of this stuff. I just, um, I, I, I'm kind of making a little bit of assumptions on some of these things. Uh-oh. I'm going to find MMO, return. Okay, let's just do this. Oh, this needs to return. I think it's just context. Uh, I need time. Oh, and I need WebSocket. I should probably have like a client networking package, but whatever. C.con undefined. Oh, this is the wrong. Uh, there we go. Oh, shoot. I need to do... Um, hmm. This is some awkward naming. I'm going to keep this C. I'm going to make this uh, um, WSC. WebSocket con. This will make a... I'm not going to have this variable. One thing I don't know, do I try to close this? Do I just try to close it? Oh, whoops, this is supposed to be C. Oh, I don't know why this isn't a pointer. I'm gonna, actually, I think both of these should be pointers. Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Oh, that's a new one. Your Prince Fleet is forever announced. Oh, they announced like a year ago. That's what happens when you develop in Java. Yeah, that's what happens with legacy code bases, I think. They just take a long time. There's so many, there's so many impacts when you make a change. I'm gonna make CSS super stupid simple, like build something that could convert a simple markdown language to CSS. That would be nice. The problem is there's a lot of CSS stuff. What the, the problem with uh, making a language that compiles to another language is like sometimes it's like, oh, the like outer language that I have doesn't do this thing that I know is possible in CSS. So like now I can't do it. Now I can't use your language. But as long as you make it so that you can still like embed regular CSS, but it makes it so that CSS easier to use. I think that's good. That should be a pointer. Now we're talking. Import not used context. What was the other one? Not enough arguments. Reconnect loop. World. Yeah, unsafe CSS goes here. Yeah, I am not responsible for anything that happens after this. Oh, I need the URL. Wait a second. Oh, wait, why do I need the URL? I need to... S would that ever change? No, that would be ridiculous. Um, so URL that's used here needs to be uh, C dot url okay that's weird let's do this for the proxy for the client what was my test oh yeah i wanted to kill the proxy it's weird yeah now it's trying to so i had to exit before the reconnect loop would work that's weird i think i have to hop off though um but i'm gonna leave this to fix it next time do you think i made a mistake not trying graphics programming uh i don't know i don't think mistakes are necessarily a bad thing i think it's about uh if you want to do it now then do it my obsession with math could have made me good at this, I think. Yeah, I mean, if you're interested in doing it, then uh, I think it's a good path to follow. Yeah, thank you guys for coming by. It was fun. I enjoyed it. It was a good one. So we had some good progress. Not a, uh, I guess we have like a little login menu now, which is nice. And then we're on the we're on the verge of having reconnection logic, which is going to be good. And let me see my tasks for the MMO. I tried to plan them out. So it'll be a little bit more like uh, we're doing this one right now. Connections, disconnections, and notifications for that. These ones I'm gonna do later, but I want to have it launched. Like I want to have a, a um, I want to have a one that's live while I'm working on it because I think that'd be cool. Like a little website people could pop into, click, like log in, and then run around. Even though that's the only game. Um, that one we won't do later. We'll do later. This one we'll do later. This one we'll do later. Then after this one, I think all I need to do is um, uh, go through all my to-dos and set up a deployment. I will probably stream on Thursday next. What's today? Tuesday. Yeah. Probably Thursday next. Yeah. 
Yeah, thanks everyone for stopping by. It was enjoyable. I'll see you all on Thursday. Bye.